It's week seven of the season, and the district is heating up. Hello, everybody. Terry Bennett here on Granny's Bakery 7 for a Division I show right here on L4 Media and S2S Sports Network. As Matt Diggs and I are going to do what we do each and every week, and we're going to break down the week seven action in 7 for a Division I as it's really starting to heat up. Uh, a couple of key games, really one big key game, uh, this week, Panther Creek versus Dallas Carter. We'll also talk about last week, and we'll kind of start shooting ahead at the playoffs, uh, looking at the districts around 7-4-8 and what they're going to do. All this, of course, being brought to you by Granny's Bakery, located at 401 West Pecan Street in Salina. You can give them a call at 469-352-8806. You can find them online at grannysweeties.com. And, you know, the, the most awesome thing about Granny Sweeties, it's not just the cakes. It's not just the pastries or the bread or the cupcake factory, though. That is pretty darn sweet. It's the classes. And that's because Granny's Bakery wants to teach you what she learned from her grandmother. Uh, you can learn about their classes. Just go to grannysweeties.com forward slash classes. Now, the next two are basically already sold out. Uh, they have another one late in October. And there will be many, many more coming, especially with the Thanksgiving season right around the corner she's gonna have a couple classes to help you there so check them out and we do appreciate them being title sponsor of this show all right we're gonna take a break and we come back matt diggs joins me and we're gonna break down week seven seven four a little week six start talking ahead also looking at the playoffs right here on granny's bakery's seven four a division one show on s2s sports network part of l4 media is your demanding work lifestyle in need of fire-resistant clothing that can keep up? Well, L4FR clothing should be your go-to for quality, affordability, safety, and style. L4FR was founded by a third-generation oil field worker who is also a veteran. Thus, this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity, all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To view our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. Si habla espanol. All right, Matt. Let's get into it. The Granny Bakery's 7-4-A Division I. Uh, I was just telling you off the air, you know, we were so focusing on that Panther Creek-Wilmer Hutchins game, which turned out to be a really good game on a Thursday night, uh, that Pinkston almost shocked the district as Dallas Carter had to stave them off 24-22. Uh, to 22. Uh, Basically, it came down to a safety in the third quarter is what, what won the game for the Cowboys. Uh, were you surprised by this? I was absolutely surprised. I wasn't, I wasn't surprised in the sense that, you know, it, it was a competitive game. I, I thought it might be, uh, but the way it kind of transitioned itself or, you know, there are times in the game, if you're watching it, keeping an eye on it, you legitimately thought Pinkston was going to win the game. And you see this every now and then when you've got a team like, you know, Lancaster, who's just got to throw everything at their opponent. And, and and certainly Pinkston was fired up and, and Carter cannot play this game where they're just thinking to themselves, they're going to walk into all these games in this district outside the Salina and especially what we're going to talk about this week with Panther Creek and, and just blow them out of the water because this district is much improved. We talked about it last week, and, and I think it's been a, probably a recurring theme that 7-4-A is, is really good right now, and there are five teams uh, that would probably make the playoffs in just about every other district. I mean, I don't even think it would be uh, too far to say right now that there are four or five teams that would all win district six, four, a, you know, I mean, you know, you look at Kennedale right now and, and you think of Panther Creek, Salina, Carter, Wilmer Hutchins, and maybe even Pinkston might be all favorites over Kennedale right now. So when you've got that kind of parody and you've got that kind of strength in the district, you have to bring the a game every week. And I was kind of thinking about, you know, 
going down to the district four, three, a, you know, Whitesboro is one of those teams that, you know, they're not good enough to beat the top teams, yeah. but they are not good enough to go in there and have three or four turnovers and win all of those games. So they have to pay, still play at their peak, even if their peak isn't necessarily going to be good enough to get to one or two. And, and I very much see this with Carter right now that, you know, they have to play at their peak to uh, stave off those bottom teams, maybe North Dallas and, and, and range they could go around and just show up for, uh, but definitely with the Hutch and with Pinkston, you got to bring that a game and they clearly didn't against Pinkston. And I think that's setting them up for a potential failure and, and perhaps they aren't who they think they are in this district might expose them a little bit. Yeah. You know, Pinkston basically didn't throw. Uh, I mean, they literally had no passing stats. Uh, Tolerani and Williams ran for 133 yards. Coleman Obi ran for 93 yards. Uh, and at the end of the day, this was one of those old 1980s-style slugfests. The two teams uh, both had under 200 yards of total offense. They both turned the ball over. They both It was combined 14 penalties. It was ugly, ugly, ugly. And I was talking to a coach in the district, and he was talking about, yeah, you know, Carter, th- that's just who they are. If they're motivated, they can play with anybody in the, in, in the region. But if they're not motivated, you're going to get a game like this. And, and, and I'm like you, there, there's still a couple I, I don't think North Dallas can do it I don't think Carrollton Ranchview but Panther Creek and Wilmer Hutchins both to me I almost kind of feel like they might be favorites playing Carter going forward right now I, I think they kind of have to be considered favorites especially from what we we see now we can look at Carter and go you know what we think they might be or what we think they should be but they still don't have a clear calibration. And and we talked about it last week that I was more impressed with Panther Creek in their loss to Emerson than I had been in any of their wins that they've had. But now that we've seen them beat Wilmer Hutchins and the way they beat Wilmer Hutchins uh, on, you know, I I came, I came away from this game almost, I feel, I felt like a hypocrite. It's what we call cognitive dissonance in the psychology world is watching Panther Creek. They are more of what I was, or more of what I was hoping for as far as they are well coached. They are a fine-tuned machine. They are executing very well. But at the end of the day, I also came away disappointed because and this is my first time seeing them, and they just don't have the Jimmies and Joes. You know, they, they are not size-wise what Salina, Carter, and, and Hutch are going to be. Uh, so even in my rankings this week, I came away incredibly impressed with them, but I lowered them in the rankings because there's no way they're going to beat Stephenville. I mean, if, they, if they lined up with Stephenville tomorrow, they're not going to beat them. They're going to have a good game plan. They're going to play their butts off, but they're just just not going to beat them. And now you have this game against Carter where you've got Panther Creek who is executing so well. Their quarterback is so intelligent and, and such a leader of that offense. And, and you're talking about how that game was such a offensive masterpiece as far as just run. You, you called it trash and ugly and all that stuff. I, I think those games are beautiful when you just get out there and you run it and, and you find, you know, you find that niche and you find what you're good and you make that other team stop it. Panther Creek, can do that passing to get the running game accomplished. You know, they weren't playing too vertical last year or last week against Wilmer Hutchins, uh, but they were finding ways to get creative ways to get the ball in space. And if they can do that against Carter, I think they have a really good chance to give Carter well, I, I do want to point out, I, I have no problem with, a, with a, a game that's between two teams that are just ground and pound. But if it's ugly and it's just literally falling forward with dive plays, three yards, three yards, three yards, and there's not a lot of, as you said, figuring out how to get your guys the ball in space and stuff, yeah, it can become trash. But let's, let's talk about that Wimmer Hutchins Frisco Panther game, uh, Panther Creek game, because that's one of those that when you look, if you don't look at the score and you look at the stats, you're like, hey, Wilmer Hutchins might have won this game. They outgained Panther Creek. Uh, they out uh, yards per pass, yards per rush. Uh, they outgained them rushing wise by almost 100 yards. Penalties were even. Turnovers, they had two, and one of them being the big one when the game was still in doubt, throwing it into the end zone and, the, and Panther Creek getting the interception. But, you know, it's funny. Grant and I, we said it last night on Sideline to Sideline, the 4A show. We agree exactly with what you said. I give Panther Creek credit for when it when they needed to. They made the plays, and they stretched it out against Wilmer Hutchins eventually. But then I also kind of came away from that game going, ah, Panther Creek did not really wow me athletically. I was expecting a little bit more on the athletic side for the Panthers. 
Yeah, I mean, they had three really standout players. Uh, I don't have their names memorized. I, I, number three, number one, and their quarterback, Braxton Roberts. Those three just incredibly like, okay, th- 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 this is a core you can work with uh, at running back the three and number one. We're kind of running back, slot back. You know, they could move them all around. And then uh, Braxton Roberts, the quarterback. But after that, the offensive line, the defensive line, Hutchins kind of bullied them, you know, yeah. on, on, on the line. But they found quick ways, you know, to, to overcome that. You know, it's great if you're – if, if your defensive line uh, for Hutchins is so much better than the Panther Creek offensive line, you can't have five, you can't have seven step dropbacks. You got to get the ball out, get it in space, find creative motions to get out there. And that is exactly what Panther Creek did. And that's what coach Surratt does. And they did a heck of a coaching job, but it was a definitely a game that Wilmer Hutchins would probably win if they had a little bit more of a stylistic identity to them. Uh, the sophomores that they had, you know, were, were a little bit mistake prone. But I came away loving Wilmer Hutchins, you know, just becoming a big fan of them in one game because they are so sophomore driven. This is going to be a team. And I say this with a big if because, uh, you know, people move, things happen. Yeah. Uh, if Wilmer Hutchins can keep this core of sophomores together the next two years, they're going to be dangerous. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I still think that if they can get into the playoffs as a second or third place team and honestly, even a first place team, like, again, let's talk about it. These districts, you know, their district up up against them is not that great. Uh, and, and so when you look at that first round, uh, you know, I think you even said it a, uh, last week that, you know, th- there's a good chance that this district, depending on who the fourth place team is, uh, th- they might pull a, pull a, not a sweep. Cause I still think Anna would probably win against, you know, pretty much anybody else, unless for some reason, Salina fell all the way to the fourth spot. Uh, but after that, the first three teams, I think are all winnable games for seven, four, a division one. Yeah, and they're also losable games. Yeah, and that's kind point. of the crazy parody that you have there. We talked about last week that you don't want to see Paris. You know, hey, if Paris gets that fourth or third spot, that's not the matchup that you want to see. Nevada community is, is probably a okay matchup if you end up with them. Sulphur Springs, depending on uh, which variation of them uh, comes out. Kaufman is a team that's young and getting better. Uh, you know, so you got five teams there. I don't even know who the five teams are. It ain't going to be Maybank, but you know, there's going to be. I uh, got Anna, so you probably got four teams fighting for three spots in, in eight, four, a, uh, I think you could flip a coin right now and, and, and pick who is going to come out. I think Nevada community right now, statistically is probably the, the most likely to not make the playoffs yeah. out of that five. But at the same time, you know, they, they, they play good quality football over there and it just takes one upset. It just takes Kaufman having one bad game. It just takes Paris having one bad game and, and that can, and they can get in the playoffs. Cause when you're in these 16 districts, you just got to win two. And if you count Maybank as, as, as a win for everybody, you has got to win one. And if you got three cracks and, and you know, you're maybe a touchdown behind all three of those teams. And all of a sudden you just need one win. It, it's really hard to, uh, you know, prognosticate which one is not going to make the playoffs. Uh, but it, it's going to be about matchups too, you know, more than anything in these seven, four, a versus eight, four, a, it's really going to come down uh, to matchups. And I think Carter is going to be the most prone to that because as you mentioned, they got to be interested in, and we saw it with Sunnyvale that the wrong kind of matchup, the wrong kind of style, they, they may not play very well. And right now I'm having a hard time thinking that Carter isn't going to be the four seed because the Wilmer Hutchins version, I saw if they get up for Carter and they will, because that's their big, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, that's their big proving ground game. I don't think they're beating Salina. And this week, I'm going to pick Panther Creek over them. So then it's Carter, oh, Wilmer Hutchins, and the avoid Annabelle. And Hutchins might have enough talent to beat them. And at least in one calibration with Pinkston, there's a pretty clear differentiation between uh, Carter and Wilmer Hutchins in that game. Yeah, and, and just real quick, you know, because we're a 7 4 a show, we'll take a peek over at 8 4 a I think we're going to learn a lot this week because you're going to get Nevada versus Sulphur Springs, and you're going to get Paris. Harris versus Kaufman. So you're going to get two calibration games right off the bat, the very first district game, and, and kind of start seeing where those teams are going to be slotted. Because Kaufman, to me, is the big what if, because they're very, very young. They started out the year 0-4, but then they did beat Sunnyvale last week. And if we want to compare, Sunnyvale beat Carter and, and beat them pretty, not d- destroyed them, but it, it was a one, pos- oh, I think it was two possession game. Uh, but Kaufman, if, if Kaufman is one of those teams that grows up quick, I could see them being second and to be honest with you if if they're third or fourth i'm not sure again a carter if they're third would want to see kaufman i mean i I think that could be an issue for the cowboys as well 
Oh, absolutely. And and Carter, I think, you know, has been hyped up on that this is going to be the team. But when you look at what the, what they've done, other than beating Kimball, I'm still waiting for that defining moment. They had a chance against Sunnyvale. It didn't work. And now they're going to have a chance against Panther Creek, and it's their homecoming, and I think it's not going to work again. So at the end of this day, of, of the day, what would you say after Kimball is the, the – thing you can hang your hat on for Carter and say, okay, this is what Carter is. This is who they've got. I don't have an answer for that right now. Four and one sure looks nice, but it's kind of an empty four and one for me. Yeah, it was 22-14 Sunnyvale beat them. I mean, you're exactly right. They're four and one. Uh, I, I guess Kimball, like you said, you hang their hat on that, but it, that's, a, that's a rivalry game. Weird things happen in rivalry games, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we'll see. I guess this week is the first one, the Panther Creek game. I'm like you. I think Panther Creek wins it, but you know, I do still think it's going to be a one possession game. And if Carter remembers that, Hey, we're the most athletic team on the field, you could see the real Carter Cowboys stand up. Well, absolutely. I mean, this is one of those games. It wouldn't surprise me to see Carter win 35 to seven. And it wouldn't surprise me to see them lose 42 to 28 because uh, Panther Creek is going to find something in, in the tape that we can just run over and over right at them. And, and Braxton Roberts will. And, and for, for Wilmer Hutchins, the thing that they found was the hard snap. They got so many false starts against them, and then they were able to chunk it down the field. Now, they weren't able to take advantage of those kinds of false start uh, jump balls down the field, even though that they had about at least seven of them. But if, if Carter gives up one or two of those, now you're down 14 just because they, they are so aggressive and they use that aggressiveness against them. You know, I, I kind of think of the highlight of the Mesquite Horn and Rockwall uh, game where, where Rockwall had that one trick play at the end of the game where they kind of had the, the offensive line just kind of stutter yep. and then they threw across the field and, and took it down to the one on the fourth and 12. Panther Creek is going to have those plays ready. They are, they are fired up for this. Is Carter taking them seriously? I don't know if Carter is taking them seriously. I think Carter might be reading their own press clippings and like, hey, we beat Houston 8, 65, nothing. We are for real this year. And this whole district is for real. And you can't take that for granted. And then you kind of look at what Houston Yates has done after that 65-0. And they've won uh, all four of their games. So you're like, hey, we, you know, this is, this is what we do when we get hyped up. But can Carter keep that consistently for 10 games? I haven't seen it, and I, I'm very nervous about this game because the wide spectrum of outcomes that could be seen in this game are significant. Carter should win this game, but they've done nothing after that game against Houston Yates to make me believe that they can. Here at L4 Media, we talk high school football, 4A, 3A, and 2A in Texas. We talk East Texas sports. We talk NFL, guy talk, movie, and booze. We also talk wrestling and so much more. And you can see it all on our YouTube channel at L4 Media Company. Like and subscribe. If you have any questions for me or Matt about 74A Division One or any of the 4A Division Ones around 74A, and I don't want to get, I don't want you to be uh, sending me emails asking about a West Texas 4A Division One team. Uh, do that for Sideline to Sideline, uh, the 4A show that you can hear each and every week, the Grant Goodwin and I do, when we talk all of 4A across the state of Texas, S2SGrantAndTerry.com. That's also on YouTube. Uh, you can find it at L4 Media Company. Try and stay inside this show, though, with questions for this show. That's Terry at S2SSport.com. Uh, and as always, I appreciate Matt joining uh, joining me for his perspective. But, you know, that, that Pinkston-Carter game just stands out so strong right now. And, and that's going to be we'll, – we'll, we'll figure that out going forward. Though. We'll, we'll know more uh, after Thursday night. I think it's Thursday night when they play. Uh, when uh, Carter and uh, Fr uh, Frisco Panther Creek play. Uh, you, you, we're going to finally kind of start to know, uh, you know, who's who as far as that game. Yeah, that's on a Thursday. Uh, and, and that's in, uh, that's at Dallas car. I think it's at Kincaid, uh, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a good game. And, and we'll know then after this one, where everybody is. All right. We'll of course talk about that game and more next week, right here on granny's bakery, seven, four, a division one show on S2S sports, part of L four media.